what's up guys in the last video we were talking about temperatures or essentially temperature and how we can measure the average velocity on the substances and of course if you want to measure something you need a scale something that you can compare with and eventually make it a standard so we have of course the first scales that we were getting in uh, I don't know maybe one 1700 etc was the Celsius scale which is the one we use it makes a little bit more sense because it's based on 100 Celsius and it's based on the water which is a pretty awesome material we love it uh, unique it's everywhere and zero was boiling uh, zero was freezing point and 100 was uh, the boiling point etc and we have the Fahrenheit which makes not that much sense for all SI unit users, but actually I would say also English units doesn't make that sense. They have a better reference, but actually, well, we're going to see that in the next slide. Then comes the theoretical scales, which are absolute. And these ones are more, uh, let's say, thermodynamically important or relevant because they are talking about the zero or the zero Kelvin or the zero ranking actually are the same because it's when the molecules stop at all and I think it makes a lot of sense because when the molecule has no average kinetic velocity which is this when they stop moving they have zero value and that's you know in mathematics zero is a very special number and thermodynamics in these scales this is also a very specific number if you use zero Fahrenheit and zero Celsius, well, they don't make that much of sense. We're going to see that later. More on the Celsius scale, sorry about uh, going very fast, but I wanted to give you the Celsius scale right now. It's based on the water, on the boiling, boiling and freezing points of it. Zero Celsius, freezing point. 100 Celsius, boiling point. Uh, the user who invented it, probably Celsius, uh, force the scale to be a hundred let's say hundred degrees because he could actually use one or ten but he decided to use hundred or even he could use one thousand but he chose to be hundred that's good I think that is very logic for the international system the problem is that in mathematics the value of zero is very important as I told you before so this zero in thermodynamics but this zero Celsius is not that relevant. If you're speaking on water, okay, maybe it's the, the freezing point of water. But if you're using other temperatures, uh, I mean other substances, it does not make sense at all. Then comes the Fahrenheit scale. It's based on even more random facts. Let me tell you. Zero Fahrenheit uh, was the lowest temperature of a brine in liquid state. So this guy, Fahrenheit, actually is German. Many will think it's American or British, but not. He was German. He chose that he will mix one to one to one. What do I mean with that? Is one kilo of ice, one kilo of water, and one kilo of this salt, which is uh, ammonium chloride. He makes it in a bowl, and then he chose that whatever the temperature was there, he will name it zero Fahrenheit which will be something around here. Zero Fahrenheit, I think, is about minus something degrees. Mm, Celsius degrees, sorry. And, okay, that's the first one. Then he told I need another 100 uh, scale. So, because probably zero and 100 was pretty famous scale. Celsius choose it, Fahrenheit also choose it. But he did not choose the water uh, boiling. He chose the average human core temperature which is about 37 Fahrenheit. Uh, so probably if you are between 0 and 100 Fahrenheit, you are healthy, if you are low, you are not healthy, you are maybe having high hypothermia, and if you have higher temperature in your body, you are probably sick with fever. So that's a good one. But once again, the body, the human body, and this random salt, ice, water, and ammonium chloride make sure it does not make sense at all in thermodynamics. So eventually, Lord Kelvin came, and this guy was totally into thermodynamics. He actually got pretty awesome results in that. He chose his Kelvin scale, 
and base it on a very thermodynamically important concept, which was the absolute zero theory. What does it mean? Essentially that gases have a lot of movement. Then come liquid have partially a lot of movement. Solids have a little bit movement and eventually when they achieve zero or no movement, movement at all, this will be the zero or the absolute zero. And Calvin, Lord Calvin, choose this. Since he was into Celsius scales, he decided that one Kelvin will be one Celsius. But he will use another reference. Instead of using the zero Celsius, he will choose the zero absolute, which in Celsius was minus 273. So once again, zero Kelvin is the absolute zero, no molecule movement at all, plus 273 Kelvin means zero Celsius and plus 25 will mean the typical room temperature so when you hear 300 kelvins hopefully you get the idea that it's about 27 Celsius which is not that warm yeah maybe Europeans would think it's warm but uh, it's okay it's room temperature it's awesome climate weather etc and then came ranking which is the equivalent of Kelvin but in the English system. This guy was also into Fahrenheit scale. He made the same assumption. He said maybe well if Lord Kelvin did that why wouldn't I do that in my system. So he used also the absolute theory, uh, the absolute zero theory as zero, zero ranking but a little bit more one Fahrenheit will be one uh, ranking. So it's essentially the same. Of course, we have another numbers here. And the thing here is that uh, 1.8 Celsius is 1 Fahrenheit. So that's why we have very high temperatures here. Uh, 460 will be the freezing point of that brine he choose. And the freezing point of water will be 492. So let me give you a scale comparison. The ones we choose, Kelvin, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Rankin are the most famous one and the most used one. But of course, there are many others. You can have this. Maybe pause the video, choose the reference value. I think it's here. Wait, wait. The, if you want to choose, I don't know. Let's choose 25 or yeah, 25, a theory, theory Celsius. You can find all the values on here. You can see the ranking scale is the one that has very high values. You can find also that the Newton scale where it has very low values here. Top is 35. And of course they have different bases. But the important thing is to have the equivalent formulas. And maybe I'm going to give you later the formulas. You should know them by now because that's actually I think from elementary school or even high school, middle school. You should know that by now. But I'm going to give you to you anyways. This was about the scale comparisons. So if you want to continue with the zero law of thermodynamics, please go to the next video. So guys, probably you want to see more exercises, more problems, questions and answers. Uh, I got this problem section in my webpage. Go check it out. Here is chemicalengineeringguide.com. Go to courses and you will find this thermodynamics course. Click on it and check out this block, which is TD01 or TD1, which are the basic concepts of thermodynamics. I'm going to add some problems, basic problems. Uh, they will help you to start understanding because you know that theory is perfect to know, but if you apply it, it's way better. You even get better basis, understand better, you get the ideas faster, you know when you get more theory, you know where it's going to be applied, etc. So I totally recommend you. I've got a lot of more material for this course. So I will be pretty happy if you go and check out the course. And if you have any type of doubt, comment, doubt, uh, well, uh, anything, recommendation, go and check it out here. Uh, you can send me an email, contact at chemicalengineeringguy.com or like my Facebook page, I add many stuff. Actually, I got some blog stuff and some other funny post, uh, chemical engineering post, engineering in general, how to get the job, etc. And 
or go directly to my web page and go to contact. I got a contact form or go to courses, wherever you want. And that's what's everything for this uh, video. Thank you for the attention and keep going with the videos, guys. See you in the next one. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.